Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Thea George and I'm here with Alan Treffler of PEGA. We're at Cybos 2017 in Toronto and we're talking about artificial intelligence. Alan, thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you, Thea. It's a pleasure to be here. So, artificial intelligence, how much is hype, how much is reality? Well, you know, it's interesting because there's real substance at the core of what's being done. But there is so much hype and so much confusion and lots of things are being branded or rebranded as AI both to try to get some attention, but also, I think, in some situations, to almost intentionally confuse. That's not terribly helpful, is it? No, it is not. Not for software buyers, not for services buyers, not for customers in general. Indeed. So are there risks? Should we all be joining Elon Musk's campaign to stop the AI apocalypse? <laughs> I think we're a long way from uh, any sort of apocalyptic introduction of AI. But you know, I've come to a much simpler definition of AI, and one that I think actually probably puts it into context for the next three to five years. AI is anything that makes a computer appear smart. And a lot of that can be done, well, by the computers doing work on their own. But from what we see, the best use cases for these types of AI are when they work in conjunction with people becoming, in effect, tools to let people have intuition and make better decisions, while at the same time guarding against mistakes. So this would be augmented intelligence, as we might hear about, or yeah, that kind of definition? Augmented intelligence is a great term. I think it's really almost a collaborative intelligence, though, as well, because the idea that the computer can find patterns, let people see them, but still trust human judgment with perhaps a final check to make sure that the product sold is suitable, et cetera, um, has an enormous amount of value. AI can also be used to completely rip out a lot of the inefficiencies and lack of capabilities that, that companies have in the way they run their operations. A lot of great service or sales fails from the moment of interest turning into actually a moment of result. And, and getting AI to help smooth those outcomes can have a, a huge impact, but there's one pervasive problem we see in the way that organizations approach this. Okay, so tell me, how can an organization get started and avoid that, that problem? Well, you know, if you want to think about building a smart organization, and you kind of think of your architecture, of uh, collections of, well, back office systems, typically organized around products or sometimes geographies, and front office systems, typically organized around channels, like uh, the mobile channel, the web channel, the chatbot channel, People have these pictures in which they're trying to connect things up using new buzzwords like microservices as if that's going to solve everything or the, the cloud will be the solution to all. What I would tell any company is they should look at the picture of what they're doing and ask themselves, where's the brain? I look at these pictures all the time and there's no brain in the picture. And a brain, by the way, cannot be based on last night's batch run can use it, but it's got to be up to the second, real-time, omni-channel cross-product. And if you don't got a brain in the picture, then whatever you're going to do is not actually going to be intelligent, it's going to just be artificial. Sound advice, Alan. This has been great. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, a real pleasure. Thanks, Thea. And thank you for watching.